Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm Rob Wolkenbrod. Thanks so much for having me on the podcast here. And I want to talk a little bit of basketball here because there has been quite a bit that has happened here um, the past few days, um, keeping it relevant with the uh, the, the Ben Simmons, um, I don't know if you want to call it fiasco, breakdown, collapse, whatever you want to call it. But this... I mean, this was pretty epic in terms in terms of oh my god, what am I watching? Because we watched someone who was so hyped coming out of college, this bona fide number one pick. Um, comparisons to Magic Johnson for his size, his playmaking ability, um, his court vision, uh, athleticism of getting to the hoop and creating for players and getting. I mean. I shouldn't say get. I was about to say getting his own shot, but he Magic Johnson found ways to score, and Ben Simmons eh, hasn't really found ways to score. <laughs> that was his problem coming into the NBA, and that is clearly his problem right now. What, what are we four full years of him in the league, and it feels like he's regressing. And this series against the Hawks really showed that Ben Simmons is regressing. He's a fine defender. He's still dishing out. He can still dish out over 10 assists a game if he wants to. Still sub for teammates, but it's really a problem when uh, he can't... He he passes out of open layups now, open dunks. Uh, this is a this is a broken, broken player who's just fallen apart and collapsed from the Hawks just getting inside his head from every little foul they committed on him to force him to the free throw line because he was so scared of taking a free throw. And he's just, he doesn't take a jump shot. I mean, that's been known for a while, even though he has made, I think, maybe one, maybe two three-pointers for his career. But you don't see a mid-range shot. You don't see anything. You don't really, you don't, the only thing you see is things close up to the basket, and he wasn't even willing to do that at the end of the game in a crucial moment when the Sixers needed the basket so badly that could have turned the game in their direction and really made this um, made this their their series to go against the uh, the Bucks next. It, that didn't happen, and it's a shame. It's a shame because I, I love Ben Simmons coming out of college. I love the way he showed in the beginning of his run in the NBA, and I thought, okay, he'll develop a jump shot, but that hasn't happened. So, before I get into that, I should just say that this whole Game 7 incident was pretty comparable, I guess, to a collapse of Nick Anderson proportions. I I get, I think that's fair. You're in the middle of the playoffs, crucial moment. Um, I think Nick, Nick Anderson's was a little more, a little more of consequence, maybe. But Ben Simmons still, I mean, it's it's a player who just just was broken in his head, and now you have to wonder. I mean, how does he? How does he, how do you come back from that? How do you come back from that? Um, because I'm I'm not sure right now, um, because he. he there's so much with this game that needs to be fixed, and it's all offensively. It's all being able to score the basketball. And maybe, yeah, it's one thing, but there's a lot to it. There's creating your own shot. There's hitting a mid-range shot. There's finding confidence from the free throw line. There's finding confidence from five feet away. There's finding confidence from two feet away. There's maybe stretching out and feeling confident enough to go behind the three-point line. And... It does not seem right now that, or at least it hasn't seemed in over the years, that he has willingly committed to becoming a better player in this regard. He hasn't. We're, at, we're four years in, 
And I think this was um, this was from a uh, a quote from a Fox Sports article from Yaron, Yaron Weitzman, where he has spoke to an assistant coach, or maybe an assistant coach said this at the time. They said, "Has Ben Simmons improved on anything since he's come into the league?" And the entire coaching staff of the 76ers was silent. No one could say anything. Because there's nothing to say. I, I don't know what Simmons has improved on. I mean, yeah, sure, I'm not up close and personal watching him every day. But watching from afar, especially right here just outside of Philadelphia, where I've been exposed to his games however many times now, it's, yeah, it's a problem. He hasn't He hasn't shown anything different than he has when he's come into the league. He hasn't changed at all. And sure, he's just 24 years old. He'll be 25 for next season. He'll be 25 in a couple weeks, I think, actually. But the fact that he hasn't shown any kind of growth in four years now, four full years, five years technically from the time he was drafted, it's concerning. It's definitely concerning because you're going to reach a point where he's maybe... in a couple of years, he'll be 27, 28. He'll be in his quote-unquote prime. And if his prime looks exactly the same as this, or if the NBA keeps evolving, Ben Simmons could see his role decrease and decrease by the moment. Because right now, he's supposed to be the second star. I mean, at some point, in the maybe a couple of years ago, he was considered a co-star, but it's, this is clearly Joel Embiid's show now. I don't, I don't think that's a... I don't think that's a conversation anymore. And... Now, just with Simmons, it's where does he fall in the hierarchy? He's not a second star. He shouldn't be. Is he? he might be. Behind, is he behind Tobias Harris right now? <laughs> and just makes you also wonder too. Where? How could he? Could things have been different if Jimmy Butler was still around and he willingly recommitted to the Sixers? Would Simmons have more of a role where he? Could be could settle in more as a, as a distributor, and have guys take the pressure off him. Maybe, but with the way how the Sixers team is constructed, with the expectations over the past four years, this is always supposed to be Ben Simmons growing into the superstar player, a six foot ten, six foot eleven player who's so athletic, so gifted as he is with handling the ball and pet and um. And defensively, and you always thought if you just get maybe a little, little bit of a jump shot, he could be okay. He could survive, but that has not happened, and it's holding him back from being a superstar. He's not even a star player right now anymore. I more consider him just a, a he's a fine player. He's not a bad player. <laughs> he is, he is definitely not a bad player. I don't, I don't want to misconstrue anything, but he is maybe not what we thought he was going to be. Um, Maybe, maybe maybe that's just the case. Maybe we we look too far. Maybe those flashes he's shown over the past few years were were too much. I uh, it's all stuff to reconsider right now because he needs to go into the gym. He needs to go imp- to improve. He needs to do everything possible to even get a marginal offensive game because he doesn't have a marginal offensive game. He has a non-existent offensive game. He is a broken player. Now, my thing with him is, if that doesn't happen for him, if he doesn't develop any kind of offensive game, maybe he can become a Draymond Green, Green-like player, where he's the anchor of a defense. Sure, there's Joel, there's Joel Embiid there, but I'll get into that in a second. But Simmons can be an anchor of a defense, pass the ball. Hit a sh- maybe hit a shot inside when he can. I mean, sure, Draymond has uh, a more diverse game of being able to go behind the arc, but Simmons can become that kind of guy. I mean, sure, they're not perfect compar. It's not a perfect comparison here, here whatsoever, but in that kind of role where Simmons works around more talented offensive players rather than being relied on to get his buckets and to succeed in that regard. Because Simmons can do everything else, or a lot of the other things, he just can't score for his life. And that's unfortunate. So maybe he has to go somewhere else and become that guy. I'm thinking right now that's probably the case because the Sixers have a lot of work to do, and I'm just not sure how much this team is going to change without moving him 
because if they don't move him, I don't. I just yeah, I just don't see how the fabric of this team is going to look any different. Um, because there's going to be shooters around him and and Embiid, and Harris is still there, who's a fine player but flawed. Um, otherwise, I mean, you're going to have players who are like Seth Curry and Tyrese Maxey, Danny Green. It's going to be the same team. Do you really want to run it back? No, I, I don't I don't think it's a good idea because we're so far into this and I just don't it's not working. The Sixers team just can't can't advance. They're too flawed. They move out but if they move out Simmons, they're gonna also be exposed in the backcourt because I mean the the hypothetical has been sending him to Portland for CG McCollum. CG McCollum is a good scorer, but he is not someone to be relied on defensively. Um Maybe the Sixers could be a funner team in that regard, but you're still so small in the backcourt. You're gonna need a bigger guard to go along with him, or um, someone who's a little more pass adept than someone who can be who's a little more um, in control of the offense. Maybe that's maybe that's Kyle Lowry, but he's not a bigger guard, I guess you could say. Um, so that's a little bit of a problem, and you'd have to really rely on the size up front to make up for it. Uh, Harris is big, you have Embiid, you have to get maybe someone else in there. Maybe you install Danny Green in there, but I don't know if that's a, that's not really a long-term fixture. Um, yeah, so the Sixers have a lot to look at here um, because Simmons just doesn't have a lot of value right now. He's owed so much money over the next four years. It's I think his contract tops out $38 million by the end of it for an, for an annual salary. It's a lot of money for a player who brings you some things but not everything and when he can't score and when he's inside his head oh man that's that's gonna be a tough that's a tough self to to give to a team another team it's a lot of money Uh, i don't have the basketball reference numbers off the top of my head to look at but it's a lot of money and i don't know what Sixers are going to be able to deal with it. Someone, someone will take Simmons, and I'm probably just not thinking of the ideal scenario off the top of my head because Simmons is still a talented player. But the money and the fact of is he ever going to morph into something beyond what he is now? I, I don't know. I don't know. It's probably going to be a team we don't expect that takes him on. Maybe a lower, a smaller, not even a smaller market team, a team that's just far away from doing anything. Maybe Sacramento takes him? I mean, they have De'Aaron Fox there, but Simmons, you really have to experiment with You do what you do with him. Um, and maybe that's actually ideal, because Fox is a secondary ball handler who can score. He's not the best shooter, but he, he can score. He can do a lot more. Uh, so maybe Sacramento... Uh, I don't know. You can look around the NBA and find something. Maybe he goes to Houston where there's where it's a bare bones situation, and he can do whatever the hell he wants there. Uh, man, it's it's tough. It's tough to find a scenario, but for a sentence ago, but uh, it's gonna be quite the off season in Philly. That's for sure. Not just for the Eagles anymore. So I guess one more thing I want to talk about with the NBA is this narrative that I've been seeing ever since this, the Philly-Atlanta series has ended on the NBA being in a quote-unquote bad spot with Milwaukee, Atlanta, Phoenix, and the Clippers as the Final Four. I don't love that. I, I think that's wrong. I, I If anything, I think this is a terrific growing moment for the game where fans are going to be more exposed to Trey Young, to Devin Booker, to, I mean, Giannis is a top tier star and he's becoming a, a casual name but the fact that he's in Milwaukee it's more the fact of that it's just like okay Milwaukee whatever Atlanta whatever the Clippers being secondary to the Lakers whatever Phoenix whatever but and also too because these teams none of these teams have won an NBA championship either ever or since the 1970s to me getting that diversity of teams in there is great Getting these new stars in there is great. You're getting exposure. You're putting these new faces at the forefront. 
you're getting new faces for the NBA to sell and to market, I think that's great. And I don't think there needs to be an asterisk here put on to despite, yeah, there's injuries that have come up along the way with a lot of teams and superstars that have already been knocked out. But the NBA, I don't think, is in a bad spot here. I really don't. Um, even though the, maybe the viewership might not be as high as ever, and I, I'm ho- I hope I end up being wrong on that, but I think this is good for the game. I think more exposure for other teams, for other players, rather than the Lakers, Kevin Durant, LeBron James, Steph Curry, yada, yada, yada. I think this is great. Get get. I mean, sure, Kawhi Leonard has been around here for quite a while, but it's more the fact that and Kawhi Leonard is also still hurt. But the Clippers, they haven't been around anything with the championship at all. They haven't even been to a conference. I don't. Th- I think this is actually their first conference finals. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think it is. So, I take this as a win. The only problem is that I have with this is I also put this on the NBA for not marketing their smaller market teams, quote-unquote, um, better because you look at the NFL, look at the, what the NFL does. I mean, no matter what team makes the Super Bowl, no one blinks an eye. I mean, the Buffalo Bills and Kansas City Chiefs, and that matchup looked looked like something that people had no issue with. Um I mean, the Falcons weren't a couple of years ago. It doesn't matter. Tampa Bay's not in a big market, but yeah, Tom Brady. But still, it's not a big deal. Um, when the Oakland Raiders were in, I mean, Oakland's, I mean, Oakland isn't the top tier market, but no one blinked an eye year, year twenty years ago. Uh, you can just go across the board here. So why are we blinking such an eye with this NBA playoff situation? And yeah, sure, we just Cleveland's not the biggest market in the world, but LeBron James was there. LeBron's not here. So we're getting more exposure to other players, other cities. I don't I think this is a great thing, and hopefully this this settles into maybe fans' minds as the league continues to develop, that it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal that more that there can be more parity beyond it being a super superstar league of LeBron and Durant and then the Lakers and Steph Curry with the Warriors and so on. It's, uh, it's, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. So we'll, we'll see. I, I hope it works. I hope it works out well viewership wise here. Um, I hope fans give it more of a chance, but we'll see what comes along. We'll definitely see what comes along here. (laughs) <laughs> but <laughs> my best take my <laughs> I shouldn't say my best my funniest takeaway from the past uh, couple of days has been Twitter convincing me that Kevin Herter looks like every ginger actor that's appeared in a movie everyone especially <laughs> the, the the ginger from uh, Dead Poets Society <laughs> Twitter has convinced me that Kevin Herter looks like every single one of them and you know what I agree. <laughs> So, uh, thanks for having me on the podcast. You can um, follow anything I do on, um, well, Forbes, I'm hopefully getting back into soon. Um, covering the San Antonio Spurs, getting into that offseason stuff. Um, Wokenmedia.com, where I do video editing, logo design. Hoping to get some promotional stuff back up for that soon. On Twitter, at WokenRob. That's W O L K E N R O B. And I'm hoping to do some YouTube content soon with movie related things, but I haven't gotten to that yet. So, yeah, so that's where you can find all my stuff at. And yeah, let's, uh, let's hope we have a good basketball playoffs to close out here. So, damn it, Wade!